All right, so this is our photograph. We've got a couple of different photographs here, and I think we should, you know, not compositional marvels or anything, but they're okay for now. So let's go in and open this one that's a little dark. One of the things about working with photographs in Bridge is that you can see the metadata, which tells you the f-stop, shutter speed, if there was any exposure compensation, ISO, white balance, and a bunch of other information, file size, pixel count, right? That's the metadata, and that comes free with every image, which if you're a photographer and you've been keeping a notebook with your aperture and shutter speed settings, you don't have to do that anymore. Now you have this. Also, if you'd like um, something that you did, you can always go back here and see how to do it again. So when you have a JPEG, right? You a JPEG and you want to open that JPEG, you can just double click on it and it will open Photoshop, right? But if you're shooting in camera raw, you may have an extension like a CR2 or a .nef. And what these are, are the raw extensions. So there's a CRW, NEF, there's also DNGs. These are digital negatives. You can't just open an NEF. You can't email it to someone. They just open it. It has to be converted. Because all the, what a raw file is, is all of the information that you recorded without any processing. Right? So it's kind of like a negative. Right? Think of it like a negative. And you just couldn't send someone a negative and say, here you go, this is the picture. They have to do something in order to get it to be a positive. So um, each camera has its own proprietary extension. So you'll see a CRW, an NEF, or if you go into my folder, a CR2, which is Canon's extension. The DNG, which we will go through, is a universal raw extension that Adobe has created in order to kind of universalize things a little bit. <coughs> All right, so a camera raw file, again, contains unprocessed picture data from a digital camera's image sensor. So when it is saved, it has to be converted. If I open this one, but I double click on it, it won't open directly into Photoshop, but it will open a component of Photoshop, which is called Camera Raw. See it right there. You can also use Lightroom. Lightroom has the same basic elements and it's also a photo editing program. All right, so what I like to do is just treat this like a digital darkroom and it's set up in a way where it's very intuitive. Kind of start at the bot, start at the top and work down to the bottom. If I start here at the white balance, I'm going to go to auto to see what it says. So white balance is the temperature that it recorded the light. In this case, I think the picture looks pretty blue. Could have been shot in shadow. And I've got a couple of ways to adjust that. So I have the pull down menu where I can go through presets and see which one works best for me. I also have the temperature, which is measured in degrees Kelvin and is the warmness or coolness of the image. And I have the tint, which compensates for magenta or green casts. So there's a couple of different ways to get your white balance. In this case, I think it was probably in shadow and warming it up a little bit, if I go to auto, isn't such a bad idea. If it's too much, I can always slide it back. If I wanna go more, I can go more. But you wanna try and keep the ground here neutral and look in your shadow and highlight areas oops, to make sure you're not getting a weird color cast. That's kind of what warm dirt looks like so I'm okay with that. All right the next step is the exposure and right here is all the information you're going to need to work with the exposure. You have your white, your highlight area, your midtones, which you adjust with the exposure slider, your shadows, and your blacks. If you grab the exposure slider and you slide it to the left, the histogram moves to the left and makes the image overall darker. If I slide it to the right, it shifts the midpoint here of the histogram to the right and lightens up your image.
think I'm going to go too far with it. That looks pretty good. Now the contrast here, I traditionally leave alone because if you look at the next tab, you have the tonal curve settings and you can adjust them by using the sliders that correspond to the different parts of the histogram. Highlights, shadows, darks, and lights. Or you can use the point, which if you use Photoshop, you're probably pretty familiar with, right? We recognize this from curves. We could always just put on a medium um, curve contrast if we like, and then adjust any of the points individually. I'm gonna go back to linear for now. That's why I leave the contrast alone. Now the highlights is this part here, from here to here of the histogram. So if I drag this to the left, it, what it's doing is pushing that part of the histogram to the left. I'm not sure that's a great solution. Let's see if I can get this. Okay. What if I drag it to the right? It starts to fill out that part of the histogram, making it a little more even on that side. You can see it's affecting just a certain part of the luminosity range. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag it and look at how the trees start to have a bit of a highlight. If you use the letter P, you can preview on and off. So you can see we've made a pretty good change in the color and we've started to open up the highlights. Now the shadows work very similarly. If we drag them to the left, it's going to darken up these shadow areas, which are located right here on the histogram. If we drag it to the right, it starts to open those areas up. If we go too far, we lose a little bit of sense of depth and it starts to look a little artificial. But we could create a little more drama by dragging it to the left or open it up by dragging it to the right and showing more detail in the shadow areas. Again, I'm hitting the letter P on and off to show a preview. White is the very edge of this histogram where you can see we don't have a pure white. There's a little bit of pixel wasteland here at the very edge. If I wanted to redistribute that, I could drag this to where the pixels meet the very end of the histogram. Again, P is before and after. We have a pretty good black section over here. If I drag it this way, it will give the appearance of more contrast and intensify our blacks. If I drag it this way, it kind of equals out our histogram a little bit, gets rid of that uh, clipping at the very end. Before and after. Now that I've done these exposure um, highlights, shadows, whites, and black adjustments, I think it is a little too yellow. So I'm going to drag this down a little more to clean up this area here. Good. Still looks warm. The clarity increases the contrast between the pixels. I like to give it a little bit of clarity to kind of give it a visual punch. It's not the same as an overall sharpening, which we will get to when we go through the third panel but it gives it a pretty good effect. Vibrance affects the colors that are the least vibrant in the photograph. So in this case, it's going to affect the sky, but leave the greens all pretty okay. I don't use the vibrance that much, um, especially in an image like this where it is very heavily saturated through here. You could reduce the vibrance if you wanted to get more of a black and white effect, which is kind of nice or if you just thought, hey, there's way too much color in there. And saturation increases the color for everything overall, and I just don't ever suggest doing it. <laughs> so, if we hit P, before and after, done a pretty good adjustment for that image. We've lightened it up, We've got a much better histogram that covers all the way from the blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. And all we have to do when we're done is hit done. We are not going to open that into Photoshop right now. If we go back into bridge, you'll see this little Death Star-like icon that says, hey, I have been edited in Camera Raw, as opposed to this one, which is not, this one has been. And this will tell you. And if you decide that you want to make changes, you just double click on it and go and make changes. 
hit done. And then if the next day you come in and you're thinking, that may be a little dark, <laughs> double click on it and adjust it. So these settings are like, almost act like layers. They are not directly stuck to the image and they are editable and you can change them at any time. The uh, benefit of this RAW is that you can use Camera Raw, but you can also use Camera Raw with a JPEG and you just have a couple options that aren't the same. So we'll go through that in the next video.